approach to examination of white blood cells in a peripheral smear. When there is an indication of abnormal white blood cell count or flagging of any white blood cell parameter on the hematology autoanalyzer, prepare a smear and examine the slide. The first step is to try and differentiate whether it is a non-neoplastic or a neoplastic disorder. Non-neoplastic disorders include quantitative abnormalities and qualitative abnormalities as explained in the previous video. Quantitative abnormalities are related to increased or decreased number of white blood cells that is leukocytosis or leukopenia. They can be due to physiological causes, bacterial or viral infections, metabolic causes, drugs and chemicals or due to tissue destruction. Depending upon the predominant cell type, it is called neutrophilia or neutrophilic leukocytosis or neutropenia, lymphocytosis or lymphopenia, eosinophilia or eosinophilic leukocytosis, monocytosis or monocytopenia. Reactive leukocytosis may have counts up to 50,000 per microliter or more with a shift to the left. Leukemoid reactions can be neutrophilic, eosinophilic, lymphocytic or monocytic. The smear may show few immature cells like the band cells, myelocytes and metamyelocytes. There will be no blast cells. The findings should be correlated with the clinical picture and follow up is a must. Qualitative or functional abnormalities. These are related to morphological alterations like presence of toxic granules, cytoplasmic vacuolation, dole inclusion bodies, Mayhegelin anomaly, Pelgerhut anomaly, etc., as described in the earlier video. Lymphocytic atypia may be associated with infectious mononucleosis where the lymphocytes may show nuclear abnormalities which must be differentiated from lymphoblasts in leukemia. Neoplastic disorders are clonal disorder which can be classified based on the cytological type which is myeloid or the lymphoid series. Based on the onset, they can be classified into acute leukemias and chronic leukemias. It is important to differentiate between these types. Acute leukemias have a rapid onset, the peripheral smear shows many blast cells and the bone marrow is packed with mostly blast cells with reduced maturation. The chronic leukemias have a slower onset, sometimes they are discovered as an incidental finding. The smears show a spectrum of immature cells with less than 10% blast. Bone marrow is hypercellular with all stages represented. Peripheral smear examination is the first step in diagnosing leukemias. It is reasonably easy to differentiate between acute and chronic leukemia based on the percentage of blast cells. However, in acute leukemias, it may be difficult to differentiate between myeloid and lymphoid blast cells on morphology alone. In such cases, it is adequate to report the case as an acute leukemia requiring further workup for classifying the leukemia. The diagnosis is then confirmed on bone marrow studies flow cytometry, cytochemistry and cytogenetics. The various cell types have been described in detail in the next video. Let us see a brief overview of leukemias. Acute myeloid leukemia is the most common form of acute leukemia during first few months of life and during middle and later years of life. It shows increased leukocyte count. There is presence of large number of myeloblasts. 
presence of OR rods help in diagnosis. The acute myeloid leukemias are classified based on the FAB group recommendation into several types. The gradation is as follows. M0 is minimally differentiated, M1 is without maturation, M2 with maturation, M3 hypergranular promyelocytic, M4 myelomonocytic, M5 has two parts A monoblastic and B monocytic, M6 erythroleukemia, M7 megakaryoblastic. Rare types include eosinophilic and natural killer. Note, AML are classified on basis of 500 cell count on the bone marrow aspiration smear. Acute lymphocytic leukemia. The leukocyte counts may be normal, moderately increased, low or occasionally very high. It is usually associated with anemia and thrombocytopenia. The dominant cell type is the lymphoblast. They may be of L1, L2 or L3 type, described later. Chronic myeloid leukemias usually have a classical picture with increased leukocyte count usually from 50 to 300 into 10 to the power 3 microliter. They could be higher also. Presence of complete spectrum of granulitic cells, that is, promyelocytes, myelocytes, metamyelocytes, band forms, and myeloblasts. Usually associated with basophilia and eosinophilia and thrombocytosis. Chronic lymphoid leukemia mostly found in older patients and commonly incidental finding. Increased leukocyte count seen from 30 to 200 into 10 to the power 3 per microliter. Typical chronic lymphocytic leukemia shows 90% cells as small mature lymphocytes with few prolymphocytes. Presence of smudge cells are characteristic. Myelodysplastic syndrome or MDS, also known as pre-leukemic syndromes which usually result in acute myeloid leukemia. They are characterized by cytopenias on peripheral smear, that is anemia, thrombocytopenia and leukopenia. Peripheral smear will show atypia in one or more cell lines of leukocytes, erythrocytes and platelets as explained later. Bone marrow is hypercellular along with dysplastic changes and increased blast cells. The French, American, British or the FAB group classifies five sub-entities of myelodysplastic syndrome that is refractory anemia, refractory anemia with excess of blast, refractory anemia with excess of blast in transformation, refractory anemia with ringed sideroblast and chronic myelomonocytic leukemia.